Howdy. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to find the area between uh, two curves. Okay. Now in order to find the area under a curve between your function and the x-axis, that area is going to be the definite integral from your a to b of your f of x dx. And so if I want to find the area between two curves, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take the integral from a to b of your top minus your bottom function. Now here's the issue with uh, drawing this pictorially, okay? If uh, you have trouble drawing functions or the functions are just really nasty and they don't give you a picture, I don't want you to depend on the picture. If you can draw the picture, that's going to make your life a lot easier because an area is just the integral from a to b of top minus bottom. However, if you have trouble with that, that's okay. You know what? Most people do. So, the way that I kind of designed this lesson is I'm going to assume you don't know how to sketch these graphs, okay? That way, these three steps that I'm about to show you work every single time, okay? Now, I'm not trying to insult you like, oh, you can't graph. No, instead what I'm saying is as they get more complicated, and you'll see some of these functions can get kind of crazy, um, I don't want you to depend on that. So let's talk about these three steps. So go ahead, actually, what I want you to do, pause this video, jot this down real quick, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to see, hey, where do these two functions intersect? And I'm looking for the area between two curves. Well, how do I know where they intersect? Set them equal to each other and solve for x. And more times than not, you're going to get two x's, because a lot of times it'll be quadratic or something like that. And so you'll get some x equals a, x equals b. The next thing you're going to do is figure out which one is on top. And what you're going to do, the x's that you found, those are actually the limits of integration. You're going to take your interval a to b and do a comparison. You're going to compare your two functions, y equals f of x and g of x, by plugging in a random number in between a and b. I'm going to pick some random number, we'll call it c, in between a and b, and I'm going to plug it into both functions. Whichever function outputs the bigger number, that's your top. And then finally, areas, just like we talked about here, is the integral from a to b of top minus bottom. I've got three examples. I'm going to show you how to deal with x's. I'm going to show you how to deal with y's. And I'm going to show you what if uh, you have multiple x's that you got to worry about. And um, you have two different regions. We'll talk about that as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and actually do an example. Okay. So hopefully you've got those three steps with you. Because as we go through each example... Those are the three steps that I'm using. So let's take a look at number one. Number one says, find the area of the region bounded by y equals x squared minus 3x plus 12 and negative x squared plus x plus 18. This is what I'm talking about. A function like this, I trust if you plug it into your calculator or whatever, you can graph it. Or if you try real hard, you can graph it. But let's uh, just go through those three steps so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Step one, where do they intersect? They intersect, well, where then they equal each other. So let's set them equal to each other. So I'm going to have x squared minus 3x plus 12. And I'm going to set this equal to negative x squared plus x plus 18. Okay, I see that I have a quadratic. And so with quadratics, if you remember, we want to move everything over to one side. Set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So adding the x squared over, I'm going to have 2x squared. Subtracting x, I'm going to have minus 4x. And then 12 minus 18, that's minus 6, is equal to 0. Let's factor out that 2, because when I pull out a 2, I'm gonna be, it's going to be a lot easier to factor, because I'm going to have x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And we can factor that. We can factor this, what adds to negative 2 multiplies to negative 3, that's a negative 3, and a plus 1. And so I have x minus 3 times x plus 1. You set each of those equal to 0, and I get that x is equal to 3, and x is equal to negative 1. And these that we just found are, are our limits of integration. Now that I know what my limits of integration is, or, I don't know, I wasn't an English major. Step 2 is we're going to um, compare and see which one's on top. So I'm going to take my interval, negative 1 to 3, and I'm going to do a comparison. 
I'm going to compare y equals x squared minus 3x plus 12 and y equals negative x squared plus x plus 18. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a random number in between negative 1 and 3. In this case, I think the easiest number would be 0. And I'm going to take the 0 and plug it into each function. And I'm going to see which function outputs the bigger one, because then that means that it's on top. And notice that when I plug 0 into this first function, I'm going to get 12. When I plug 0 into the second function, I'm going to get 18. And last I checked, 18 was bigger than 12, which means this is my top function. And now that I know which is my top function, your last step, area. Area is going to be the integral from negative 1 to 3 of my top, negative x squared plus x plus 18, minus the bottom, minus x squared minus 3x plus 12. Now what I said was correct, and what I wrote is what I said, but what I wrote isn't correct. Why? Well, you're not just minusing the x squared. You're minusing this entire function. You would not believe how many times people do that. And that's okay. You know, that's, that's natural to forget about that. But what I need you to be aware of is you're subtracting function minus function. Subtract everything, not just the first part of that function. Make sure you would distribute this negative into everything. Now, from here, I'm going to trust that you can take a definite integral, okay? If you still have trouble with definite integrals, we have, pre we have videos on that. But what I'm going to do for all three of these problems is we're going to set up the integral so that you're able to find the area, okay? So that's our three-step process. Let's do a couple more. That way, we make sure that we have the hang of it. Okay, so let's try number two that I got here. Let's see, what do I got next? And then next, I want to find the area between the region x plus 1 and 7 minus x from 2 to 5. Okay, so we're going to have to take this into account. I'll show you where to take that into account in a sec. But I don't want your three steps to change. Because the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set these guys equal to each other. So I'm going to set x plus 1 equal to 7 minus x and do a little bit of algebra to solve for x. Here, I get that x is equal to 3. And what's going on I also look just at the x-axis. I want to find the area in between 2 and 5. But this function intersected at 3. So what we're going to need to do, we actually have to split this into two separate integrals. What I'm going to want to do is find the area in between 2 and 3. And then plus, we're going to find the area between 3 and 5. That's how you're going to do it in case sometimes you'll have uh, three x's. If you have a cubic function, you might have three x's that you need to solve for. Or in this case, I have a region where um, the intersection is in between that region. Whenever that happens, you'll need to split this into two separate integrals. Okay? So what we need to do is we're going to do step two and step three twice. So step two, I'm going to do step two from two to three. And then I'm going to see which one's on top between 3 and 5. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to compare y equals x plus 1 and y equals 7 minus x. Now, what I'm going to do is pick a random number between 2 and 3, let's pick 2.5, and plug that into each function. And when I do that, on the left, 2.5 plus 1 is 3.5, and here 7 minus 2.5 is 4.5. 4.5 is bigger than 3.5. And so in between 2 and 3, 7 minus x is your top. However, in between 3 and 5, let's do another comparison. So y equals x plus 1, and y equals 7 minus x. And once again, we're going to pick a random number in between 3 and 5. I think 4 would be nice and easy. And so let's go ahead and plug 4 into each function. And so here, 4 plus 1 is 5. Over here, 7 minus 4 is 3, and this time 5 is bigger than, well, 5 is always bigger than 3. But this time, the x plus 1 outputs the bigger number. There's your top. So, therefore, your last step, step 3, if I want to find area. Area is going to be the integral from 2 to 3 of my top. In this case, will be 7 minus x 
minus my bottom, x plus 1. Notice all the parentheses I'm throwing on. It's better to over-parenthesize than under-parenthesize, if that's a word. But um, make sure the big thing, the big thing you better parenthesize <laughs> is you need to subtract the entire bottom function. Now, that was the area between 2 and 3. You then need to do the integral again from 3 to 5, except this time the x plus 1 is my top. So I'm going to have x plus 1 minus 7 minus x. From there, you would find both of those integrals and add them together. Let's do one more. Okay? Let's do one more problem to really make sure that we understand these three steps. So number three. Find the area of the region bounded by x equals y squared plus 2y and x equals y plus 20. And now we have functions of y's and man, people freak out. And they're like, I don't know what to do because I can't draw this. That's okay. You know what? These three steps still work. I promise. Watch. Step one. Find out where they intersect. Okay. So, we're going to set uh, y squared plus 2y equal to y plus 20. I see you have a quadratic, so let's move everything over to one side. Set it equal to 0 and solve for y. Solve y squared plus y minus 20 is equal to 0. We can factor this into y plus 5 times y minus 4 is equal to 0. And I can get that y is equal to negative 5 and y is equal to 4. And these are my limits of integration because in step 2, I take my interval, my interval between negative 5 and 4, and I'm going to make a comparison. I'm going to compare x equals y squared plus 2y and x equals y plus 20. Okay? You pick a random number in between. In between negative 5 and zero, 4, I kind of like 0. So let's plug 0 into each one. And when I plug 0 into each one on the left function, I get x equals 0. And on the right side, I get x equals 20. And x equals 20 is bigger. And so therefore, this is my quote-unquote top. And the reason I kept putting it into quotations is because with y's, what do they always teach you? They teach you, hey, it's right minus left this time. Well, x equals 20 is to the right of x equals 0. So why would you do anything different? It's really the same thing. Yes, I understand it's right minus left and x equals 20 is to the right of 0. But this is still my quote-unquote top function. Okay. Now that I have that, finally, final answer, step 3, area. Area is the integral from negative 5 to 4 of top, y plus 20, I'm parenthesizing again, minus, make sure you minus everything, the y squared plus 2y. Distribute that negative, combine like terms, and integrate. That is how you find area.